Welcome to the power of the stamp on any legal documents or any documents at all really. It's Peter Temple and I wanted to give you a very powerful tool to use on all of your documents that gives you the highest authority that you can have in the land when you're dealing with let's say the court system or you're dealing with cease and desist documents or anything that has a legal aspect to it. And this all comes from the reality that everything in the world is ruled by a contract. So when you get mail, for example, uh, and it usually would have your name in in capital letters because that relates to your Sestwi V Trust, your birth certificate, what they're trying to do is contract with you. So that letter is actually an offer to contract. And when you're dealing with the court and you get a summons, for example, that summons is an offer to contract, and so you know how you have to know how to uh, get back at it and shut it down if you don't want a contract, and that has to do with I I uh, do not comply. But you can augment that with putting a postage stamp on it that puts it at a much higher level, a level above the courts, and anybody who is knowledgeable in the courts will respect that and usually there's no argument in that particular case. So here we have a summons as an offer to contract with a corporation, and I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about your, your straw man account that you have. I would assume at this point that you know that when you get an offer in the mail of anything with your name and caps, they are attempting to steal money from your uh, straw man or Sestwika V trust and so you want to avoid that. They're trying to contract with your uh, birth certificate, a bond that comes from your birth certificate, and all that money that is yours as a beneficiary, but you don't have access to it. You will soon, as Gassara, Nassara Gassara gets announced, and that money is all coming back to you. But in the meantime, they try and get access to it. So any contract, any subscription, you have three days to decline or rescind. It's the same thing as decline any contract that you've either signed or, for example, you've taken something home from a store. You have three days to back out of whatever that is, and that's by law, and it, it, uh, it, is, it affects virtually everything, even the courts, and so that, that's what we're using. So you can send back, and I'll show you this. Um, you know, there's another there's another video on here uh, that at least I try and keep them both, uh, you know, <laughs> together. But there's another video on here that talks about how to decline a summons, and so you should look at t these two videos together. That one's about five, 15 minutes. Uh, I'm not sure what this one is yet, but we'll have to see. Uh, that one, the other video on declining a summons, also talks about tickets, you know, if you get a citation for speeding or something like that, how you can shut that down. And that sometimes they will take you through three steps, but it's playing their game. And then it also goes through a summons if you get a court summons in three days, exactly how to shut that down. So the first place I want to start is here with just introducing the Universal Postal Unit Union and this is the logo for it. Now the U Universal Postal Union operates under the authority of treaties with every country in the world. It's the overlord or, or, or overseer of international commerce. Every nation has a postal system and also has reciprocal banking and commercial relationships whereby all are within and under the Postal Union. So that's uh, important to know and it's why you should always send all of your important letters through the post office rather than uh, you know a carrier like UPS or something like that. Okay so that's important to know because you know the, the post office has legal implications and you can send it registered and people are very aware of mail fraud and yet you don't uh, ever hear of UPS fraud so you know courier fraud it, it's post office and they'll come down on you very hard and if you if you were involved in mail fraud you're usually going to get a jail search sentence so that's important so it's why you should send all important doc documents through the post office rather than private carriers which have no legal authority whatsoever. 
Now, the gentleman that is in charge of the Postmaster, the Postmaster General of North America, is Russell J. Gould. And here is his name written in quantum grammar at the bottom. And you should always know how to write your name in quantum grammar because that stipulates that you are a sovereign. You're a living man or woman. And it sets you apart from your straw man name, which is in capital letters. So they cannot confuse you if you ever wanted to go into a court as a living man or woman. You need to be using this way of writing your name. And there's more on that. I've got a file which is uh, that talks about your autograph. This is an autograph. Your name uh, in script is a, is a signature and the two of them are very different. You always want to use an autograph if you're doing anything legal uh, with the court system, for example. So that's Russell J. Gould. And if you know him and his Capture the Flag video, he was very important in capturing the flag for the USA in 1999 uh, to make sure that it didn't get taken over by the crown, the British crown. And so he's a very important person and he sits over the postmaster, uh, the, uh, the post offices of North America, including Canada, so that's Canada and the U.S., and I have got my uh, sovereignty papers from him, for example, and I'm going to show you those uh, coming up. The authority of the Postal Union, or the Universal Postal Union, is automatically invoked by the use of postage stamps. So they're at the top of the pecking order and what you're doing is invoking their authority when you use a postage stamp on a letter. I'm not talking about on the outside of the envelope. I'm talking about with your signature right at the bottom of whatever you write. This includes putting stamps on any documents for more clout. After all, nobody on earth stands above the post office and the postmaster generals. So that is Russell J. Gould, and also these are the stamps that you can use. You want to use a stamp with a denomination on it. It needs to have a number. It can be five cents, it can be one cent, it can be two cents. A dollar is getting a little rich. If you've got a lot of money, you can have a dollar stamp. They tend to be larger in a lot of cases, which is, is, is kind of helps for their visibility and when you're writing your name but you also don't want them to be too large because it stands out way too much on a, on a paper and takes up too much real estate. So that's something um, to be careful of. You also want to try and find stamps that are, have a matte finish so that you can write on top of them. Okay, that's um, kind of important, but not you know terrifically, but you need to be able to see some of your autograph on the stamp area. So whenever you put a stamp on a document, I'm just going to show you uh, an example. This is a cease and desist order that I wrote up, and it has got my uh, autograph down here over top of a stamp, and here's my name as a living man down here. This has been copied a couple of times, so it's a little hard to see. And then uh, all rights reserved without prejudice, there's my stamp, and here is a thumbprint. And you can see it over here. This is zoomed in on it. So signed by, which is important, uh, colon, Peter, hyphen, John. There's a colon in there. And then temple, period. And that is your name. It should go kind of on an angle on the stamp. And the stamp uh, gets negated by it. And then you go up and you put your thumbprint just using a blue ink pad. And your name should be written in blue ink as well. Uh, there are alternatives, which I'm going to read to you uh, coming up. But uh, that is the thumbprint which says, hey, that's me, I'm alive. And that gives you the authority uh, at the various, very highest level, level when you do that. So that's what you do. Uh, that's not a very large stamp. It's a fairly small stamp. And that's uh, good to have kind of a medium range stamp because usually your area for signing something is uh, you know kind of this this size relative to the rest of the page so you don't have uh, you know if you're signing a document document that somebody gives you so whenever you put a stamp on a document inscribe your full name over the stamp at an angle okay so that's what I've done here doing this cancels the stamp you can see the angle uh, more more so here. All right, so that cancels the stamp, which is apparently very important. Uh, the ideal colors for your autograph are purple, 
which denotes royalty, blue, which is the origin of the bond, your birth certificate, and gold, the king's edict. So you wouldn't be using that most likely. So I would stick most of the time with blue. Avoid red at all costs. Although a dollar stamp is best, it's a luxury unless one is well off financially. You can use a stamp of any price, and I showed you these stamps up here. Uh, you, the rationale for using a two cent stamp is that in the 19th century, the official postage rate for the lawful post office of the United States of America was fixed at two cents. Now that is good for the U.S. Uh, for Canada, I'm not sure that we have anything like that, but honestly, the range is up to you. You can go as low as a penny, you can do two cents, it really doesn't make any difference. You just have to have a monetary value shown on the stamp. Then use blue ink, as I said, uh, blue, use a blue ink pad to put a thumbprint on the page, slightly overlapping the stamp. This signifies that you are a living man or woman. Autographing the stamp not only establishes you as the postmaster of the contract, but presents your adversaries with a problem because their jurisdiction is subordinate to that of the Universal Postal Union. Of the Universal Postal Union is, is the highest authority in the land, in the world. All right, so that's why you're invoking it, which you have now invoked for your benefit. In practice, recipients of your documents who know what you are doing with autograph stamps almost always back off. Now, in, in documents that need to use a, 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 a notary, I uh, haven't used one here. This is actually shows you it again with a fairly large stamp. This was my uh, my uh, sovereign document, which sets me off as a living man, which I did through Russell J. Gould. And here's his autograph here overlapping the stamp, okay, on just kind of a little bit of an angle. I don't think that's as important as just having it over top of the stamp. There's my thumbprint, and there's his thumbprint there. So. So that's um, the story on that. And here is a document which gives you also the notary on it, which is here. So if you're having a notary, which is very important for the courts, virtually everything will have a notary, like an affidavit, or this is actually a summons that we're turning back on the court. And uh, that is, uh, that's probably the one that you would use the most and it is then witnessed your signature, or not your signature, it's really your autograph here in blue ink is then uh, witnessed by the notary and the notary will stamp it. So if you take a closer look at what's happening here, uh, there's the stamp, there's the thumbprint, there's the autograph, which is not, it's just touching the stamp, but it really should be over top of it. Um, there, yeah, so, so you want to kind of put it across here. So by, and then the, the uh, autograph. And then the, it should say on here somewhere um, the line of uh, without prejudice and all rights reserved, okay? And that should be down here at the bottom. So that's the way to set up the document, how to set up the stamp. It needs to be with your, with your autograph on an angle. Okay, and the words that you write on this document when you're turning back a, um, a uh, summons, for example, are these words here. But again, I have put together a video which is called How to Decline or Decline a Summons. And it gives you this information in more detail. So this is what you're seeing there in that red ink. I do not comply and I do not approve of these proceedings. And then you autograph it with your uh, colon, your first hyphened second name, so a hyphen between your first and second name, then a colon at the end, and then you have your last name, and then a period at the end of your last name. And that is the quantum autograph of your name. And then you write all rights reserved without prejudice below that. And that's what you're seeing on that page. Okay? So use of a notary uh, combined with the postage stamp gives you a priority mechanism. Everything is commerce, and all commerce is contract. The master of the contract is the post office, and the Universal Postal Union is the supreme overlord of international commerce, including banking and postal systems of the world. Using these stamps in this manner gets the attention of those in the system to whom you provide your paperwork. It makes you the master of that post office. 
And you, when you go in and you turn in a summons and, and you're filing it, you can basically say, hey, I own the court. Uh, and, and by, uh, it, it, you know, if you get any pushback from the clerk, which really has no power to, to have, make any decisions about what you file. And as soon as you file, it's very much like thinking about being served. When they serve you with a summons, they give it to you and walk away. There's, there's no question that it's been served. You, you don't get a chance to talk about it, argue about it, or anything. So when you turn back a summons, it's the same thing. The clerk has to take whatever you give them. Uh, regarding your case. They cannot turn it back. If you do, uh, and particularly with this authority, you basically just walk away from the window. They've got it. If it's in their hands, they have to file it. There's no question about that. All right, so, so it's, just, it's just exerting your authority, and with this stamp, you then have that kind of authority looking at them right on the page. People who have engaged in this process report that when any knowledgeable judge, attorney, or official sees this, matters change dramatically. All of these personages know what mail fraud is. Since autographing the stamp makes you the postmaster of the contract, anyone who interferes is tampering with the mail and engaging in mail fraud. So this is one here that I showed you earlier that I did last week and I'm starting to do this with all of my doc documents that have any legal implications at all. I do this, leave enough space for it, uh, put the stamp on and sometimes you know you have to lick it so you have to wait for it to dry and then you write by and your name here in the quantum grammar and then you take your thumb and you use a little uh, blue ink pad and then you just and not too much ink because then it just looks like a great big blob there uh, but just enough ink to get your you know thumbprint with the with the blue on it and then you just put it on the edge of the stamp on the document and you can see that down over here where I've got you the uh, the close-up, you can see all rights reserved without prejudice. So invoke the power of the post office with postal stamps. It makes you postmaster for any contract offer and you get to stand above the other party. 